First of all, a huge thank you to This Mountain Life for lending me his cross trainer. I urge you to check his channel out as he owns one and rides a cross trainer in many vast terrains. Now, besides the cross trainer looking like a very beautiful pretty bike, this is a review from a new rider moving on to, I would say, an intermediate level. I'm not a pro level and hell, I can't even pop a wheelie yet. But I can ride, you know, basic single track and somewhat mediocre technical trails. So my entire review is going to reflect that level. However, my guess is if you are looking for a cross trainer, you might be in the intermediate stage looking to upgrade your DRZ or KLX250 into something a bit more performance oriented. And to shorten this up, this is the bike to have all around, from road use to tight single track to technical terrain. If I could have done it all over again, I would have gotten the cross trainer instead of the TE250i. Me being a new rider, I'm sure many can relate. Many of us are looking for that bottom end grunt when it comes to technical riding because, to be honest, not many of us new riders can do gnarly single track at speed yet, which is where most two strokers need to be. See, I did test ride the KTM 300 and of course the 250, and although the modern bikes do have low end grunt, it does not compare to the beta cross trainer. To me, the cross trainer was much easier to ride, much more forgiving, much more predictable, lower seat height, and of course, friendlier to use because of how the power was delivered. It did not provide that hit if you did over rev it, but twist that throttle and the front will definitely come up underneath you, but in a predictable way. It seems like it just doesn't want to flame out at low speeds. Like it has all this low end grunt, but it's so gentle. Dude, even at, what? Dude, my T250 is not like that. Holy hell. Dude, barely, like right here, if I'm going this low, my T250. I don't know, what, maybe the internal gears are really short or something. Then standing up, yeah. For me, it's a little hunchback. Standing up, I'm six foot, six foot one. That's all right, you know, get some bar risers and and I can't really speak for the suspensions because these suspensions are not stock. Brand new suspensions. Third gear, man, just pulls very smoothly. Ugh, dust in my eye. Definitely pulls. So what I like about this thing is, you know, I'm on third gear right now. It just has so much low end torque. Yes, Mike, I jumped your bike. Sorry. <laughs> so there's a lot of areas that where I had to be, you know, on the res with the TE250i. This area just lugs, man. So the only complaint I had about the Beta Cross Trainer was it just felt a little bit too crunched up for me, but I think with some bar risers it would definitely fix that issue. The uh, foot peg placement definitely felt fine, it wasn't too small, too compact or anything, and the small size of the Cross Trainer made it feel flickable and squeezable through some tight single track areas. The stock handlebar height though was definitely not for me, and you were definitely able to tell it was meant for a shorter rider. Then again, just add bar risers and I think that would fix the problem. Comfort of the cross trainer was actually pretty awesome and believe it or not, it was not that buzzy at all. I don't believe this version has the counterbalance on them, but the new ones do, but surprisingly, it was buttery smooth. 
Now, how about reliability? Now, as far as reliability goes, I've seen Mike torture this cross trainer like it was just a spare $300 1980s YZ as a spare bike. And it just goes and goes and goes. It never had an issue turning it on, never sputtered, nor not a single issue I can recall. And believe me, he definitely tortures this bike. Also, in the forums, I'm yet to hear about a large issue on the cross trainer. There was also one guy in particular who I remember who had 350 hours on his top end just to see how long it can go with no problems. He reported no power loss or compression loss as well and believes this cross trainer is just bulletproof. I don't know if he ended up changing his top end. Who knows, maybe he has 600 hours on it by now, but I'm pretty sure the average person would probably change it every 200 hours. Anyhow, if you guys like my content and my re review, go ahead and subscribe, hit that bell button, that way you could be not notified on the new videos that I come up with, and I'll catch you guys on my next video.